Hi guys! Do you know the Creality Ender 3 Max Neo? I'm Sandra and in this video we will unbox, assemble and review this 3D printer. So if you want to know all the details, just stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Hi guys! In this video we will unbox, assemble and review the Creality Ender 3 Max Neo. Some time ago, we assembled and reviewed the previous Ender 3 Max, and you can find the link to these videos in the description. So, if you want to know more about this new version, don't miss this video. Ok, let's start with the unboxing. At the top, we have the manual and a spool of PLA filament. Then, we have a box with accessories, and inside, there is a cutter, the power cord, spatula, screws, tools, zip ties and the needle for the nozzle. Spare parts, one nozzle and two fittings, a memory card and a memory card reader. Here we have the display and the two parts for the spool holder. Then we have the top half of the printer and here we need to be careful removing it from the box because the cables are connected to the base of the printer. And finally we have the base of the printer and then the unboxing is complete. And here is everything that came inside the package. Before starting the assembly let's check the electronics. For this we need to access the base of the printer but first we have to remove this screw. To access the electronics we also need to remove these 9 screws. Be careful when lifting this cover because the fan is attached here. The Max Neo is equipped with a 4.2.2 32-bit board. This board has a GD32F303 microcontroller and TMC's 2208 drivers. On this printer Creality crimped ferrules on the input power wires. However, the hot end and heat bed wires are still tinned with solder. The power supply is a 24 volt and 14.6 amp model. Unlike older models, the cooling fan has this additional connector to easily connect or disconnect the fan. For the assembly, we need to secure the top of the printer to the base. To do this, we have to identify the slots at the base where the top will attach to. Then just secure it with a couple of long screws on each side. Screws tightened from the side instead from underneath makes this step much easier to do. Before fully tightening the screws, make sure that the distance between the vertical profiles is the same at the top and at the bottom and check the squareness of the entire frame as well. When checking the frame, we noticed that something was wrong with our printer, and the cause of the problem was the bottom plastic covers of the side profiles that were deformed. We decided to remove them and the problem was solved. Next, we connect the two Z stepper motors. Then, we connect the display and install it on the structure. The display mount already comes with three screws and nuts, so all we need to do is secure it to the frame. To assemble the spool holder, just insert the tube to the support and turn to lock. The support attaches to the profile like this, and its rotation can be adjusted. The remaining wires are already connected, however, in our case, the cables were a little twisted. For that reason, we decided to disconnect everything and rearrange all the cables. And the assembly is now complete. The print volume is 300 by 300 by 320 millimeters. Mm -hmm. 
At the front and on the right side, we have a drawer for the tools. Same design as the Ender 3v2 and also the Y-axis belt tensioner. On the left, we have the memory card slot and the micro USB port. The printing surface is 300 by 300 millimeters and it's made from carborundum glass. The glass is removable and it's secured with four clamps. At the back, there is a strain relief. Glued under the heat bed, there's insulation material. However, it doesn't cover the entire surface. The corners are exposed. A few minutes later, we will check if this affects the temperature uniformity of the bed. This printer is also equipped with the stronger yellow springs and large knobs, which is nice. The heat bed moves on six wheels, three on each side. At the left side, the middle wheel is equipped with an eccentric nut. And at the right side, we have two wheels with eccentric nuts. We are not big fans of crossed eccentric nuts on an axis because this way you don't have a full control and adjustment of the entire wheel's grip. The print head is equipped with a CR touch leveling sensor. On the left side is the hot end cooling fan, and on the right side is the layer cooling fan. The heatsink on this hot end is bigger than the traditional one found on the previous Ender 3 models. At the front and on the right side is the X-axis belt tensioner. On the right side we have the display, the power input connector and the on and off switch. The display is a 4.3 inch color knob screen, just like the Ender 3 V2. It's removable in order to facilitate access to its interior in case we want to update its firmware. On the left side of the printer we have the spool holder. It is necessary to pay attention to the cable so that they do not get stuck in the support. It's best to pass the heat bed cable through the back so it can move better. On the back of the printer we have the voltage selector. The printer is also equipped with dual Z-axis and the lead screws are synced at the top by a timing belt. Both lead screws are constrained at the top by a bearing on each side. The cables of the Z-motors are nicely secured to the profiles which is a nice touch. The extruder is metallic but single gear and next to it we have the filament runout sensor. Before starting the first print we need to adjust the eccentric nuts. On the Y-axis we have three to adjust, one on the left side of the heat bed and two on the right side. On the X-axis we have one located at the bottom wheel of the print head and on the Z-axis we have one on the inside of each carriage. To make a correct adjustment, watch our video that explains this procedure in detail. You can check the link below in the video description. And that's it! Now we can connect the power cord and turn the printer on. On the display we have four icons, print, prepare, control and level. Here we have the nozzle and heat bed temperatures, print speed, flow, layer cooling fan, Z offset and the current X, Y and Z coordinates. In print is where we click to choose the file to print. In prepare, we have move, where we can move the axis, disable steppers, auto home, Z offset, preheat PLA, preheat ABS, cooldown, and language selection. In control, we have temperature. Here we can control the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, fan speed, and also change the preheat PLA and ABS temperatures. In motion, we can change the max speed max acceleration, jerk and steps. Next we have store configuration, read configuration, reset configuration and in info we have the print volume and the currently firmware version. The version currently installed in the printer is not the most recent one. Creality has a more recent one on their website. For more information about how to update the firmware, please check this other video. In level, we can run the leveling sequence. For the leveling, the sensor probes the bed 16 times. A 
Another necessary adjustment is the heat bed leveling. Although the printer is equipped with the leveling sensor, the heat bed needs to be somewhat leveled for the auto level to work. For that reason, we need to level the four corners of the bed. But first, we need to heat up the bed up to 60 degrees C and disable the stepper motors. Then, use a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper and adjust the height until the nozzle touches the paper. Repeat this procedure for all four corners and as many times as needed until the bed is leveled. To learn more about how to correctly level your print bed, watch our tutorial video. And since we have the bed heated up, we can check the temperature uniformity throughout the entire bed. Using the thermal camera, we can see that in spite of the small temperature drop, which was set to 60 degrees C, and the camera is recording a bit less, it's consistent throughout the entire bed. OK, we can now insert the filament and run the first print. When inserting the filament through the filament sensor and the extruder, we notice that the extruder and the sensor are not perfectly aligned. It's not a big issue since it's a small misalignment, but still. And for the first print, we decided to try the Benchy that was already sliced in the memory card. Next, we printed the Benchy again, but this time sliced with our own profile. Then, we printed this piece in vase mode. Next, we printed this small figure. We also printed this print-in-place cat. And finally, we printed this shoe. All these were printed with PLA filament. One thing we noticed is that this glass has very good adhesion. We didn't have to use any glue or anything on it. The PLA filament sticks very well. And these are the results. This is the Benchy that was on the memory card and already sliced by Creality. The result is not bad, except for the seam location that they have chosen and a little bit of ghosting. For the Benchy that we sliced with our own profile, the result is a little bit better. The seam line is hidden at the corner and a little less ghosting. The walls seem smooth and the areas where the cooling is critical came out OK. Next was this phase. Again, the walls look smooth and we can see no issues along the Z-axis. The flow looks stable as we don't see any flaws. As for the small figure, the printer was able to reproduce the small details very nicely. On this one, we cannot see any extrusion flaws once again. The print-in-place cat also turned out OK. The top layers are nicely done. The ghosting can be seen on some small areas, but other than that, it looks fine. And finally, the shoe. The printer handled this sparkle filament very well. The shoe looks beautiful. The only thing we notice is that seam line under the shoe that stays between the two parts of the shoe that could be better. But please note that this is not a problem with the machine. It's all about slicer settings that need to be adjusted for this filament. OK, now for the pros and cons. For the positive side, we can say that this printer is super fast and easy to assemble. It will be ready to print in just a few minutes. The print volume of this printer is 300 by 300 by 320 millimeters, which is not bad. It's equipped with a 32-bit board and TMC's 2208 drivers. The printer is very quiet while printing thanks to the silent drivers. The input voltage wires on the board side are crimped with ferrules, but unfortunately, the remaining wires that connect to the screw type connectors are tin with solder instead, which is not good. The leveling sensor and the filament runout sensor are always nice to have. The printer is also equipped with a metal extruder, which is much better than the other plastic ones. However, it's still a single gear model. 
The print surface is a removable glass, and during our tests, it maintained a very good adhesion without any glue or anything like that. The downside is that being a glass instead of a flexible plate, having a very good adhesion means that removing the printed parts can sometimes be a difficult task. Also, the fact that we need to wait for it to cool down before we can remove the printed parts means that you cannot start another print right away unless you get a second glass. The belt tensioners for the X and Y axis are also nice to have. This hot end is equipped with a bigger heatsink for better cooling of the cold end. The dual Z axis, which is always a good idea for printers with this print volume. The yellow springs that provide more strength. The tool drawer to store some tools and such, that's also nice to have. The display is nice and user friendly. It's not touch, but easy to handle with the knob. The firmware comes with the M16 pause and print resume features already enabled. And finally, the print quality, which we consider to be OK. For the negative points, we also have the bent profile plastic covers. The heat bed cable arrangement that, in our opinion, would be better if the cable would pass straight from the back, instead like it is now, which can easily be caught and jam the Y-axis. The filament runout sensor wires are too short and stay stretched like this, which is not good. And finally, the crossed eccentric nuts. It would be better to have all the adjustable wheels on one side, instead of crossed, because that way we would have full control of the entire grip. And that's it, you guys. Hope you liked the video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!